Hey, some nasty weather coming towards me. Not looking good. Unreal, dude. Something about Lake Superior every time I see it. So beautiful and peaceful out here. What a way to start the morning, eh? Pretty gnarly out there with the, both the rain and the wind. Oh boy. Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to yet another video. I'm gonna get up and make some breakfast, and then I'm gonna take off from here and give you guys a little context. Let's do it, let's make some breakfast. This new peaches and cream Quaker instant oatmeal is so good. It's got me to eat instant oatmeal again. I'm starting the day off with a little hike. This is Manganese Falls. Holy cow. That is a lot further down than it looks on camera. Wow, look how beautiful this is. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Way down to there. Goes a ways down to there. That is pretty dang cool. Got this huge rock face right here. This little trail. All right, I'm gonna head back, hike a little bit more, and continue on with my day. Good way to start it, though. Woo! Alrighty, guys. So it is actually a couple hours later in the evening. Currently, it is July 12th. I got an incredible opportunity to come up here to where I am today and I've been for the last week and that is Copper Harbor in Northern Michigan and the Keweenaw Peninsula it is about as far north as you can possibly be in Michigan and super remote off grid. I have to drive far to get any reception and this place, this, in my opinion, the most beautiful place in Michigan. Whole summer to really see what this place is all about and explore. There are there's tons and tons, just endless, probably hundreds of trails to explore, tons of state land. So there's, it's just pretty much a truck camping paradise here. Right on Lake Superior, there's a ton of little lakes and stuff for me to fish, hidden remote lakes, so many truck camping spots, but I had an incredible opportunity to work at Fort Wilkins State Park up here. It's got a whole four, it's a campground, and I've been working here, I've been working the last six days, and, and I, my first night actually here, um, I came up here and it was the 4th of July is when my first night I spent here and we got a ton of rain and the mosquitoes <laughs> and were absolutely horrific. The humidity, it was like 100% humidity. It was burning in the back of the truck. I had filmed the whole way up and I was planning on making a video to that, but I was just, I, after that night, I ended up just deleting the footage and legitimately the worst night, worst and longest night of my life. I was up all night and my first day of work, I was half dead. And I, no joke, I was this close to bailing. It was legitimately like, 50 mosquitoes and I, every time I kill them all off 10 minutes later there'd be another 50 in there they were they were that bad but luckily on my first day the state park the people are super nice and chilling because it's so remote they're really understanding they actually gave me a spot to camp with a couple other of the workers behind the headquarters so that's where I was you guys saw this morning that's probably going to be spending the majority of my nights and they were also kind enough to give me a screen tent for cooking in and a grill so uh, incredible hospitality from <laughs> the people up here everyone is so friendly up here I'm really enjoying it so far moving full time into this truck camper for the next three or four months until probably mid-October-ish. And yeah, let's head on out, check out Lake Superior. That's a whole run through everything. And yeah, let's do it. Wow, 
and there it is. Sit down right here. Largest freshwater lake in the world. Greatest of the Great Lakes. Unreal, dude. Something about Lake Superior, every time I see it, there's freighter way out there. It's so beautiful and peaceful out here. Wow, that is Lake Superior, and I'm gonna get on out of here. I'm gonna head back to my campsite, and I actually picked up, I'll show you guys. We got water, I got a ton of groceries. The food was very expensive. I have to drive an hour south for groceries to find them semi-reasonably priced. And I, for my mini grill that the park actually gave me, I got some a big thing of charcoal, some layer fluid, so I'm gonna be grilling for the first time here. Get back on the road and get some food. things are looking in here. Here's my little screen tent as well. Right back here, and then here's a spot. Pretty cool spot right in the woods, right in the back here. Behind my headquarters, I can just walk to work at easily every morning. Here's the kitchen, and then here's the back of the truck camper. Nothing has really changed since my big trip. Looking good, ready for me to be living out of it again. Here's the front here, it is a bit of a mess in here. I promise it was a lot cleaner a week ago, but <laughs> you know how it is, living in the back in a vehicle. Here's my cooler, which I got all my meat in right now, nothing keeping it cool. They are headquarters here where I can literally just walk like 50 yards to where I work and go every morning. They actually are going to let me use the freezer and fridge there too. So really, really nice, really convenient. And then I just walk for showers, walk into the campground. It's about a 20 minute hike through the fort and everything. And it's really, really neat. I'll probably give you guys some tour of everything, but yeah, pretty dang epic setup. I'm very, very fortunate that they let me stay here instead of out in the state land where the mosquitoes were a whole lot worse. <laughs> I don't think I would have been able to do it and I would have gotten a lot more lonely, but pretty awesome setup for the summer. I'm really enjoying it so far. And yeah, I'm gonna start getting those burgers ready and I'll catch up with you guys then. Ooh, they're getting close. I'm a rookie griller, so I'm giving them a best attempt. That's exactly what I needed to boost my mood. Some real food. Oh, just a five minutes walk from where I'm camped at. That's the fort right there. And as you guys saw, pretty incredible view. Lake Superior is right down there. A lighthouse right in the Copper Harbor. Got this amazing little creek right here. That's gonna be insane in the fall. How picturesque is that? Wow. 
Pretty dang beautiful here. This location is just insane. Get back, get cleaned up, and then probably get ready to hit the hay. Get back to work at the park tomorrow. Oh, holy crap, there are so many flies in here. You can handle a couple, but not 30 or 40 of them. Oh my goodness. Get out of here. That's as about as good as I can do. Okay. <sighs> that is the evening routine. <laughs> All right, so here is my strategy for dealing with the mosquitoes. As you can see, this topper was not designed very well, and even when I close it, there's a pretty significant gap on each side. So I've just been taking this bug spray. Spraying a little bit on each side. My socks, stuffing them up in there. I use my jeans on the other side. And that has been working very, very well for keeping the mosquitoes out. And the first night I had like legitimately 100 in here. Ever since then, I've had a few nights where I didn't have any, but the most I've had is like two or three. So it's definitely seems like the way to go. I think I'm gonna get on to bed. I gotta wake up early to go to work tomorrow. Doing a lot of booth work at the campground, lawn maintenance, cleaning up, clean bathrooms and showers. And maybe eventually they actually told me, hopefully I might be able to get out and work out in the marina or even the lighthouse, which would be super, super cool. Oh, good night. hearty breakfast. I don't actually have today off. Today is actually my first evening shift working at the state park. Um, I'm gonna be working from like 1 to 9.30, I believe. Working in the booth mostly, checking in campers and stuff. And a day in the life, gonna be doing something cool, kind of cool tonight. I'm gonna show you guys. And yeah, that's the plan. Let's head to town. Just made it to this little park here right inside the town. Check it out. It's actually almost noon already. Uh, I spent about an hour and a half video chat with my family with the Wi-Fi in the park. So that was nice to catch up with them. And yeah, so I'm gonna head down to Lake Superior. Catch you guys there. All right, guys, I ended up skipping lunch. Not even hungry yet. I'm gonna get to work, close this up. I'll catch you guys hopefully at dinner break or at 9.30 tonight. See you in a bit. Oh boy. Lunch time. Well, not really lunch time, more like, more like dinner time, but for the shift anyways, 
four hours out of the way, halfway break. It's about a little after five right now. We got some peanut butter roll-ups, or cheddar and sour cream chips, and some carrots and ranch. Alrighty guys, it's getting late now. After 9.30, I was told talking to one of the other workers that there's a path that takes you through the woods, although this is not much of a path. And right where I'm camped out, probably 50 yards away from here, I can just take this right down to Lake Superior. Yeah, shift went good today, no issues. I was impressed with myself. <laughs> Look at what I have here. Harbor's right over there. This is legit a two minute hike from where I'm camped at. I did not realize I was this close to Lake Superior. This is insane. Oh my word. I have this whole beach all to myself. So what I'm actually doing down here is people go, a lot of people and a lot of people from out of state go hunting for a type of rock called the Uprolite. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of like the science behind it, but essentially um, they glow really bright if you shine a UV light on them. And one of my other, the other workers was kind enough to lend me one right here. And that is what I'm gonna be using. So you wait for it to get dark out and you sc scour the beach looking through all the rocks and you look basically look for a huge shining for rocks that shine really bright red with the UV light. I'm building myself a little marker because I just realized that <laughs> the path going back into the woods to where my campsite is is very hard to distinguish from the rest of the forest. So I'm building, what do they call these things? I think cairns they use in the mountains. I don't think too many people come down here, which is exactly what I'm looking for. About 10 o'clock, and I've never done this before, so I don't really know what I'm doing, but what I've been told is just take your UV flashlight, turn that guy on, and then you basically go around your light and look through all the rocks and look for a very bright red glowing rock essentially and i'll save the rest of the beach for another night but yeah no luck i'll catch up with you guys back at the truck camper i won't lie i'm pretty tired and i might have gotten a little bit lost in the way back <laughs> no luck with the uper lights yet yeah Gonna watch a movie for a little while. It's about 10.30, another work shift tomorrow evening. And yeah, and then I'll probably spend the morning doing a little bit more exploring, do some cooking, and yeah, sounds like a plan. Nightly routine, and somehow there is still a fly in here. Catch you guys in the morning. Hopefully it's a nice, peaceful night. Good night. Oh. Slept pretty good last night. It's about 8.30 right now. It's just a totally different mental challenge with, I mean, it, it feels like it feels like the Amazon jungle with the humidity um, at night. I'll get through it and yeah, get up and get going for the day. Guys, we're off in the woods exploring, doing a little bit of exploring. It's about almost 11.30. We're gonna be go checking out a place called Horseshoe Bay, I believe is the name of it. It's got apparently like a cool little beach area and some cool rocks from what I've heard. And a lot of people come down here, so. I'll catch up you guys though when I get there. So we got these like little, little pools of rock and look at this, they're superior. It's the bay right over here. A couple good rocks. And there's like Superior. And just get this huge rock face here. Look at that. Got your little rock beach down there, tucked away. But I'm getting pretty hungry. I think I'm gonna head back to the truck and get some get some lunch going. Cool spot though. So I'm gonna be making up some chicken parmesan pasta dish, one that I made in Arizona.
Noodles are looking pretty much done. <clears throat> chicken. Right in there. Got to leave in like 10 minutes here so I can get to work. rougher than I was imagining. <laughs> here we go, here we go, oh geez. So the last week or so there's been a ton of wild berries all over my pro all over back here where I'm camping at. I'm looking up here, I've never really seen anything like it, and it's like, wow, this is like just free food just scoured about everywhere. <laughs> and it's making me think how that the best way I could like utilize that. I got wild raspberries, wild blueberries, um, and then two berries, one berry called the thimbleberry, which is, um, you kind of find them in the mountain regions, but in the Keweenaw Peninsula, it's really is like the pretty much the thimbleberry capital of the world. And it's one of the most sought after berries for jams in the entire country. It's easy to see why I tried it the other day and I made a little small amount of jam, attempted to, and it is just the most unique flavor ever. It's got like the perfect amount of sweetness and tartness. Also I'm gonna be looking for is something called the bilberry, which I was just recently, we're talking to locals, learned about. It's very similar to a blueberry, but it's a little bit bigger bushes than wild blueberries, which are close to the ground. I'm getting some pancakes up for breakfast this morning, so I'm gonna see if I can't find some in my the woods behind me. Yeah, should be a fun one. Stay tuned. Alrighty guys, so you can see behind where my truck camper is at. All of these, these are all thimbleberries here. You can see what they look like ripe. Very similar to raspberries. See just how many are back here. And these ones right here. Oh, you can see this plant right here. These are the bilberries that I'm after for my pancake breakfast this morning. And I've heard they also make a very good jam, but you can see very similar looking to blueberries. A little bit darker colored, but that is a really big one right there. And they are quite delicious. So we got them, I mean, you can just see everywhere. <clears throat> These are all thimble and bilberries through here. They're just everywhere. Right in front of my truck. I'm gonna collect a bunch more of these and then we're gonna start making some up some pancakes. And we got a nice little plate full of bilberries. Time to make up and some pancakes. Dump those guys in. Cake. We're gonna be trying a bilberry pancake for the first time in my life. Let's see how this compares to a blueberry pancake. Honestly, it tastes exactly like a blueberry pancake. That's pretty dang good. Alrighty, alrighty. Got my little bowl. 
Now I'm just going to walk through this grass and these are all thimbleberries here and we're going to pick a whole bunch of them. Number one. Oh my word. Look at the size of that one. Holy crap. Look at all these. That's what they look like. They fall apart a lot easier than raspberries. All right, that's how many I got so far. I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. See how many more I can get. Alrighty, guys. So there we go. That's, I don't even know, maybe a pound, pound and a half of berries. Sleeping bag, everything just drying out and airing out after all that humidity the last few days, getting some sun. Alrighty, guys. I finished sterilizing my jar. I got that up there. Hopefully it killed off any bacteria. And here we go. I'm just going to take this and dump all of our thimble berries in there. It's a big thing of sugar I got right here. I'm gonna get a couple tablespoons of this. You can already hear it starting to sizzle and bubble up. We're gonna let this heat on low heat and simmer for about 20 minutes and it'll be just pretty much done, stirring. Been about 10 minutes. That smells unreal. Already looking like jam. That is so good. Look at how many I just collected. There is just like overflowing right now. That is a full pot of thimbleberries. Chew, making jam. Look how full of a pan that is. My word. This stuff is just a dessert. There we go. Second full jar of jam right there. Takes a whole lot of berries and a whole, a whole lot of work to get one jar, but it's worth it. <laughs> Got my towel and I'm actually, uh, it is the evening after my work shift and I'm gonna be attempting to jump into the mighty Lake Superior right now and the very, very freezing Lake Superior. I'm about to be doing something that I will more than likely regret in the future. And the, and the future is about in about 10 minutes. Average temperature in Lake Superior year round is 43 degrees, I believe, when I last looked it up. So it's not gonna be a pleasant swim. That was a mistake. Too cold. Way too cold. Honestly, I can already tell, it's so, so refreshing and pretty incredible, honestly, to have a private beach with that kind of view, basically. <laughs> pretty insane for free. I mean, I get paid to live here. So, kind of unreal, honestly, but. Alrighty guys, getting pretty late. Uh, a very nice and chilled after that nice little dip in Superior. Much more comfortable being in a sleeping bag, but. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the morning. Good night. I haven't really given you guys a proper tour of the actual town of Copper Harbor. 
which is the very remote northern town in Michigan in the Keweenaw Peninsula here. And so I figured this would be a good video to kind of give you a little bit of a tour, give you some of the history, and yeah, that's the plan. Let's hop, right, jump right into it. Let's do it. Alrighty, guys. Update and run through of the truck camp, my truck camping setup. You can see I'm set up here, up in some state land. Absolutely beautiful view. Not where I'm going to be camping at night. I'm going to be camping back down at headquarters, but it's a good place to kind of get away and give a little rundown of things. So here's the back, definitely the messiest part because I mean, I have everything that I live with in here and for multiple seasons. So I have my seven gallon, seven gallon water jug. This generally lasts me eh, generally a week, week to t week or two, depending on how much I'm drinking and using dishes and stuff. And I got my red flannel, got my drone. Uh, this is like a little laundry bag, but then kind of some toiletries, camera bag, a fishing slash hiking bag, uh, GoPro and my backpacking backpack down here. Very essential, I got slippers, I got an air mattress, and there is my truck camping setup, at least from this angle. I do all my, a lot of my charging, like my phone and a lot of things, back camera batteries and stuff off of this little mini jackery unit. And my disco lights for mental support <laughs> on those lonely days. And also right here, I've got, if you flip this open, speaker, a UV flashlight, another knife, deodorant, a whole bunch of my books, it's like my little outdoor library. And then all my clothes, a whole bunch of outdoor rain gear, um, nicer clothes and stuff. And that, that's where I keep all of that in this nice little shelf area here. So there's the truck camper setup. You can see from a distance. On this side, obviously, my bed, fishing rods and some, some RAM tools and RAM stuff in there, random storage. All right, and then here is my pull-out kitchen drawer right here. And yeah, that is the kitchen. And probably my favorite feature that I really feel like separates my build from other people's builds I've seen on YouTube. My main focus of this build was just comfort. And this chair is exactly that. <laughs> it's incredibly comfortable. I've never really seen another setup with a chair like this. And that was kind of my main goal. I wanted to be comfortable. And if it's raining, I can be in here and be chill and okay, just hanging out in here all day. So that was kind of the main focus of my build, but yeah. Alrighty, and then in here, we've got my cooler, which I've been freezing ice packs and throwing in there. I've just got mostly just like condiment stuff in there and that sort of thing of pepper, no meat right now. I keep all that in the fridge and freezer and freezer at the headquarters. Bug spray, another knife, always good to have on hand. Some flies, a bunch of maps of the local area. Waders for fishing, my kayak, my kayak seat, and kayak paddles for kayaking up there. My technology bag, which got headphones, laptop, all my editing equipment and stuff. A tent, and up in here we've got my more fishing stuff, more work clothes, and that's pretty much everything. Definitely pretty messy, messy it's a work in progress, but I mean, for me, it works fairly well. Then up here, as you can see how bad and horrific the flies have been, I put one of those little sticky window things. Look how many I've collected in one day. And that's just up here. So imagine how bad it gets at night back there. It gets really old, trust me. I got water, ocean refresh shampoo. And then my dry food, which is always kind of like the hardest part to find good storage for. I don't like having it all up here, but I don't really have anywhere else good to put it, so. Alrighty guys, so I like, there's kind of a update. Not much has changed for anybody that's been here for like the last year, but. I like to give an update. I like to give a little refresher tour of the my truck camping setup every couple of months, just for all the new viewers. <laughs> I'm gonna head back into town, and I'll catch up with you guys when I get there. All right, so here's the first stop of things that make Copper Harbor a pretty popular spot to go to. As remote as it is, as remote as it is, it's the northernmost town in Michigan. There's a lot of stuff that brings tours here. One of them is that Copper Harbor is the starting point is the starting point of US Route 41, which you can see a map right here. And I didn't even realize this until I came here, but here's a big sign about it. And Route 41 starts way up here in Copper Harbor and then goes all the way down to Miami, Florida, roughly 2,000 miles in length. And we have a lot of motorcyclists that'll take it all the way up from Miami, all the way to up here, and a lot of other people. I've worked at the state park and met some cool people that travel it all the way up and then stop here in Copper Harbor. There's even a sign that shows Miami in Copper Harbor. <laughs> it shows the nearest town in Miami, so it's kind of cool. Go south 41, 
And this is east of the town of Copper Harbor. And I'm gonna work my way through the town and give you guys kind of a tour of all the buildings and stuff. So coming in from the east side and here in Copper Harbor, you see right on the right, you get the Jenny, which is the general, the general store. You got a lot of your basic essentials and stuff there. I got a nice bar, a couple bars and grills on the left side. And you got a, like a food truck and whatnot. Copper Harbor, the town was founded in the early 1840s. The US discovered copper ore here and it quickly turned into a copper rush, very similar to like a gold rush out west. And this place basically turned into like a wild west town for roughly a close to 10 years. And before that, it was the Native Americans and French, early French settlers that fished and f traded furs in the area and but you keep making your way through town and you've got a great little you've got a great like little kayak and bike rental mountain biking is huge in the area there are trails everywhere and people flock it's really like rated as like the best mountain biking area in the whole midwest and people come from all over to mountain bike the trails with the tons of hills and stuff got some more restaurants and then you've got right in town one of my favorite places i spend a lot of time at is the visitor center and postal office so i've had some gear shipped here and it's pretty effective, just a tiny little postal office. It's pretty dang cool. You can get stuff shipped there. A popular thing, you got the Uper lights, the agates that people come looking for up here. So you got a couple rock shops right in town. Pretty dang cool. You keep going through town and you get up, you've even got an old one room schoolhouse built in the 1840s as well. And it's still actually in use today, which is, I think is pretty dang cool. Take a left and go up further up there. You got old building, you got some real old cottages and a bookstore. Um, so real nice books and decorations in there. You got this old museum up kind of when you turn left at the intersection on 41. Then you keep heading down and you got an old fashioned candy store. You've got old general store, which is like one of the historical buildings. You got lots of old antiquities and things in there. Lots of stuff to look at. I've explored a lot of the shops around here. Then you keep going, you got some more little just like painting shops, little gift souvenir shops, and then the only gas station in town. Really cool little ice cream shop. And they've even got a mini golf place, a mini golf up here. You can find mini golf anywhere, I guess, even in a remote north northern town in Michigan. Once you get off 41, like the little roads that go through it around the homes and little cabin rentals and stuff are really pleasant to walk through, just like narrow, lots of nice old trees. And I loved a lot of the little cabin, old old fashioned fishing cottages and stuff in town. Lots of, and lots of old fashioned motels and cabin rentals to stay at here. Good amount of gift shops in town to check out, which I like walking through and stuff. So you do get a lot of the, like the little touristy stuff. But when you get down and you've got Jamson's Bakery, which is like the best break bakery in town. They sell, they sell out within the first couple hours every single day. Probably the biggest draw to Copper Harbor, not being just the start of US 41, but it's also one of the only three ferries that goes out to Isle Royale National Park, which is one of the most remote national parks in the US. And it's a, it's a giant island way down Lake Superior. And the ferry, the queen, the Isle Royale queen is the ferry right in Copper Harbor. And there's a bunch of parking and it takes you all the way out there. And then down towards, back towards the east side of town, you get your, you get the one really, really fancy restaurant in town called the Harbor House. I believe it's a German restaurant, I want to say. And it's a fame, really famous. It's known as like one of the, some of the best food in the UP and all of Michigan. And it's got like amazing surf, surf and turf and fish dinners and stuff. And of course, there's also, if you go back east, we got Fort Wilkins State Park, which is where I work. And US Army built the fort in, I believe, 1844 or so. The fort was put in place, not for any wars, but it was really just to keep peace between the Native Americans and the settlers here mining and mining for copper. So it was like basically just to regulate and make sure it didn't totally turn into just a free for all, like the, out, like the Wild West or anything out here. So, and it was actually, it was only like running for a couple of years and it's right on the beautiful, uh, try not to laugh when I say this, Lake Fanny Ho <laughs> is the lake here, but it's an amazingly beautiful lake with the hill that just, it's like a wall of trees. It's so unique and so cool. I can't wait for the fall. It's going to be absolutely insane in the fall. Oh, all right. So there's a little tour of Copper Harbor. Yeah, I'm going to head back. It's getting a little bit late. Time to make some dinner and I'm going to head back to headquarters, pick up some food and make some dinner. So let's get back on the road and yeah, let's do it. Let's go make some food. Alrighty, alrighty guys. So we made it back to my camp here at headquarters. We're gonna making up some chicken, pepper, uh, mozzarella cheese, quesadilla type of deal. Oh yeah, I would say 
at least looks wise, they look pretty dang, pretty dang bomb. I think it's gonna thunderstorm here throughout the night, so I'm gonna get to bed and yeah, I'll catch you guys in the morning. Oh, good morning, guys. Alright, you guys aren't going to be able to hear anything with the audio. The wind is absolutely crazy. Got my drink in hand, my Pop-Tart, Air Superior. Holy cow, look at those waves. Oh, no way. A rainbow. No way, right over the town. That's incredible. Right over the hill. What a way to start the morning, eh? Wow. Wow! Absolutely wicked out today. Absolutely love it. I love the intense weather like this. We'll be testing out for lunch a little bit of thimbleberry jam. And this stuff is like super strong, so I'm only gonna be smearing a little bit of that guy on there. That's what it looks like. Real bright red looks really good. So we're gonna roll these up and give her give her a go. Absolutely amazing. Alrighty guys. We're gonna get the old truck camper opened up. Say, those some pretty dang looking good pizza quesadillas. Crunchy and hot, cheesy. Mm. These are about to go down so easily. just sat down after killing about another dozen flies but man it is really starting to look like fall weather out there today and the last couple days and I guess it's already almost September hard to believe how quickly August has flown by and I'm absolutely exhausted my schedule's been changing a lot I've been doing a lot of long days in the booth and talking to a lot of people and to be honest I've never been so excited for fall weather so sick of the humidity and I'm so sick of the flies and the bugs. I'm ready for cold nights. Good do that, get a nice shower in tomorrow morning and then probably make some breakfast and then head out and do some exploring and check out a spot. I talked to some locals and I heard nearby there are actually some something called the Copper Harbor Petroglyphs, which I got kind of hooked on out in the southwest. I just find them absolutely fascinating. I love history and stuff and I find it really unique and Coming back to the east, like, petroglyphs are really, really rare, and to be honest, I didn't think we had any in Michigan. Yeah, that's going to be the plan for tomorrow. Hope it's a nice, peaceful night, and I will catch you guys in the morning. Good night. And yeah, get this day going. Let's do it. Alrighty, a nice little pasty stop. 
look at that. You can't even see the lighthouse out today. Very foggy. You can see Jamson's over there. Can't even see out to Superior. All right. And that is a pasty. This is a Uper staple meal right here. Absolute delicacy in the UP. These things developed back in, back in the, they originated back in the 1840s here in the UP when miners were flocking here for the copper ore rush. And they needed quick, fast food meals. And so they'd just take, they'd take chunks of dough, throw all your leftover meats and potatoes and whatever into, your, into it, wrap it up and bake it, take it to the mine. So it's a traditional miner's meal. And there you go. That's what the inside be looking like. You can see, I didn't even know what was in this one. You got potatoes, onions, and sausage. I've had a lot of pasties that are way too dry, but this one, but this one is absolutely amazing. No joke, one of the best, best ones I've ever had. Eating a miner's, eating a miner's breakfast at Lake Superior on a foggy morning. Doesn't get much better than this, dude. Alrighty, well, that was an absolutely fantastic way to start the morning. Now I'm gonna go check out um, these rock carvings that I told you guys a little bit about last night. I'm gonna share some of the history and stuff on them and the hard part though is gonna be actually finding them uh, because there's like, again, they're like kind of like a local secret. That's what we're gonna go do. I'm gonna do some exploring and yeah, let's do it. Let's see if we can't find them. All right, in the woods now. Leaving the truck behind from this point. So because there's no signs or anything marking and hardly even much of a trail marking this spot, I drove, I marked a spot that looks like it could be the area that these are located at. And since I have no service out here, I had to go into town and get Wi-Fi. And I used Google Maps, hit search, and it gives me just a good estimate of how far I have to go to get to here. I took some screenshots of the journal that kind of would show them, give me direction of where to look for them. But we're gonna look around, but this is a pretty good looking outcrop here. In the corner of the journal, I looked at it, like it kind of had like a photo in it, described something that looked pretty similar to this. So I'm gonna head up here, see what we can't find. Oh, oh, look, right here, right here. There it is, no way, dude. Got the two legs, the head right there and the neck. That even looks like a little ear and its body. Looks pretty similarly shaped to a bear. Apparently, this is supposedly supposed to be an Ojibwa carving. Those are the Native Americans that lived in this region. Yeah, supposedly this is supposed to be a couple hundred years old. There's not like been a ton of research done on these. So pretty stinking awesome. All right, so I think the next spot, I gotta get up the this, this rock pile up here. It's a lot steeper than it looks. I'm looking, just checking all these big rocks. Oh, actually right there, look. The reason this place is so secretive and people are so hesitant to give any information about it is about 10, 15 years ago, a bunch of dumb, a bunch of dumb butt college students came up here and defaced a couple of these. And these are the ones they came up to and they took tools and destroyed them. As I can see right here, this is actually a person. You can see the body, the two arms and the two legs. And the face, as you can see, you don't, can't really see a face. It used to actually be a raven, a raven head. And you can kind of still see the shape of the raven outlined right here. And then look at the raven head right there. And this is the one that they apparently defaced. They destroyed the head. It used to look a lot clearer. I'll throw a pic picture up probably so you guys can see what it used to look like 10 years ago. That's pretty awesome. I'm gonna get some pictures and I'm gonna go look for the biggest petroglyph and the one I'm most excited to talk about. But there's one final look and yeah, let's keep looking. I gotta hike down there somewhere, I think. It should be around, around here, around here somewhere. I'm just gonna, some of these are really faint. You can tell they've been through like a lot of rain and stuff. So you really gotta look closely to see them. Oh, I think, I, yep, it's right there. No way. Look at that, dude. <laughs> this is the one I was the most excited to see. But this is the, the petroglyph that causes the most controversy and it's the biggest mystery, but it's also definitely the coolest in my opinion. You can see it looks, it is the depiction of like a Viking ship, a Viking longboat or like sort of like a Phoenician ship type of longboat. 
you see lots of depictions of these types of ships in like Norse mythology and stuff, but you can see the boat right here. You can see the mast all the way up to here. You can get the point at the top and it's got the sail right here. It was absolutely amazing. There was like a rumor that this one was done by some like local, local lumberjacks back in like the 1970s with modern tools. And some experts said that this couldn't, it would take way too long to do this with like a normal, just like rock and a pick or something. But there's also other people, there was another expert that did studies on it and said that these like people back in the seventies would not have known some of these details, like the lines and how this shit, how this shit would have looked. And so there's no way they could have done it. And they think that proves it. But what's so interesting is that you know it's a viking ship and vikings were never known to make it all the way to lake superior so a lot some people believe it's like proof that vikings and longboats did make it as far west and made it onto lake superior which is absolutely insane to me and they did date this back well at least one expert dated it back and he believed it was done back in the 1300s like roughly around the year 1340 or so which is like almost what like seven eight hundred years old something like crazy like that possibly close to a thousand years old which is just mind-blowing to think about somebody that long ago it's just insane to me to think that there could possibly was like viking longboats like superior like that is just actually insane to think about <laughs> but yeah pretty dang amazing let's get on out of here Holy crap guys, that was absolutely amazing. Ojibwe rock carvings and potentially Viking rock carving. This place is just amazing. <laughs> Let's get on out of here and head back into town and then I gotta start heading south today and get some groceries because I'm pretty much out of food. Let's do it. Look at this, that's crazy. Looks like a little cave down there. Feel like I'm walking on the moon or something. And there's Superior, another obstacle. This is no trail, but look at this. That goes down a ways. You got water rushing in down there, you can probably hear it. Sun just set behind those clouds. I got probably half hour, 45 minutes of daylight left. About 8.30 right now. Got the tent set up. I'm not gonna lie, not a bad spot at all. In fact, it's pretty incredible. <laughs> Quite small, but it'll do for the night. Got the air mattress, pretty comfortable. Sleeping bag and I didn't bring a pillow, so I just got a little jacket there. But yeah, I'm gonna regret this pretty fast again. This water is so cold. I. It's gonna be feel so nice. I'm gonna sleep so much better though if I just get it over with. <laughs> oh. 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 
it is really, really cold, but also feels absolutely amazing. I was <laughs> so covered in sweat. Unbelievable, but absolutely beautiful night. I got my camp literally right there. Dude, look at this sunset. I'm gonna sit around, get changed, do a little rock hunting, and then get tucked into the tucked into the tent for the night. It just keeps getting more and more beautiful. I got my UV flashlight, and we're gonna do looking around and look for some Uper lights, do some rock hunting, because there's a whole lot of rocks here, and hopefully this place doesn't get hit quite as much as the places in town. Yeah, I'm gonna do that for a little while and yeah, I'll catch you guys in a bit. <sighs> Pretty incredible view. I will catch you guys in the morning. Good night. How about that for a sunrise? Absolutely beautiful. There's my camp way down there, as you can probably see down my little beach. And way down there is where I came from yesterday. Been here for like half an hour, and I think that's the sun finally starting to peek through the clouds over, way over in Superior down there. Superior really is just like an ocean. The largest freshwater lake in the world by surface area. gonna pack up the tent fairly soon but I'm reading this book about Isle Royal and some of the history of this area up here dude look at this map this is in 1783 the Americans were not very good at map making <laughs> that is what they thought Lake Superior looked like like where are they getting all these big islands from it must be the Keweenaw maybe I don't know that maybe that island would be they think would be the Keweenaw Peninsula look up here Look at this map of Superior. This is from 1679, so like 100 years prior, and this is the French. And this is way closer to what it actually looks like in real life. They got Isle Royale, and they got the Keweenaw right there, and I'm right, it would be right about here on this map. They got some cool pictures of the history. Got everything back and strapped into the backpack, my towel and jacket. Yeah, yeah, it's always amazing when I get all that gear stuffed into one little backpack. But now for the fun part, I gotta climb up back the cliffs and hike the roughly like two miles back to the truck through rough terrain. So not too much further to go, but walking on this is hard of the ankles. All this get all this lichen and moss all over this rock and it's it's pretty treacherous to walk on nice little cliff there oh.
back in the truck camper. Uh, it's always my day off and I gotta wake up early tomorrow to work, but got a major cold front blowing in. And this looks like it's the summer weather is done. Uh, first week of September and the cold, uh, cold winter temperatures are coming, which I'm kind of excited for. Hopefully going to kill off all this humidity and the dang bugs. But we also have some major thunderstorms coming that are going to be hitting probably later tonight. So I've actually got the truck and parked in a different spot or in the side here next to this kind of lumber back here where I've camped. Because that big dead tree right there and with the winds that we're supposed to be getting all of today and late into tonight, 35 mile hour, 40 mile hour. It's not swaying at all. It doesn't look like it's on an angle that would hit me, but I'm normally parked right on the other side of this tent. But just to be safe, I parked a bit further away. So hopefully, just in case that does fall, I don't gotta have to worry about that falling on me in the middle of the night. All right, I gotta check out and see the waves on Superior. Just cold enough today, I had to break out the flannel with the shorts. Boy, normally we're pretty protected in the harbor from the wind, but when they get it comes from the north northeast-ish, it absolutely rips. Oh my goodness. That is some nasty weather coming towards me. Not looking good. Alrighty, alrighty guys. We're gonna get the truck camper opened up. Here's how things are looking. I had to go get groceries today, so things might be a little bit rocking around, but the back of the truck camper it's gonna have to survive some pretty intense weather tonight so we'll see if it survives but time to get do some cooking actually just visited my grandparents about who live a couple hours away about two weeks ago and they were kind enough to supply me with a whole bunch of garden fresh vegetables and a whole bunch of food so and they even even made me a nice new a nice new cutting board a super nice uh, maple wood and I'm kind of it's got me kind of excited to like actually like cutting stuff and actually using a cutting board I've never really used one before so now the pressure is on it put the pressure on me and I bought a new an actual legit chef's knife not like the cheapest one but a nice you know starter level one pretty nice I'm excited it's pretty dang sharp and we're gonna be making up I'm gonna need a potato and a little onion That is looking and smelling good. Grandparents also sent me some coconut oil. We're gonna put a big dab of that in. That coconut oil seems to be crisping them up really good. Hoo hoo, that is looking good. Smells amazing too. Just throw a little bit of cheese in there. She hoo, it is finished. I got things cleaned up. Got the truck in here, rainy, 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 windy night, and check out my pile of food. <laughs> More cheese, got some ketchup on there, now, onions, eggs, sausage, potatoes. This is by far the fanciest breakfast, breakfast stash I've ever made, and now for the good, actually important part, let's dig in and make sure this actually tastes good. All right, let's dig into this hash, the big pile of big pile of food man
That is so good. I'm gonna finish this up and then start getting tucked in for the night. Probably gonna be an early close up the truck bed for the night with this weather and settle in and get cozy. Oh my gosh, the rain just came out of nowhere. It's raining like crazy in here now. Pretty gnarly out there with the, both the rain and the wind. Nice and cozy here in the truck, but golly, that rain is coming down out there. That's fun. Turn these lights up. Yep, it's going to be raining for a while. <laughs> cozy in here though. Awfully peaceful though, listen to the wind and the trees, the rain coming down. And I can hear all the way over to Lake Superior the waves crashing the rocks, so it's very, very peaceful. Good morning, good morning, guys. I slept like a baby last night. I gotta get up, I have to get to my work shift in like 20 minutes, so I really gotta get going. <laughs> but I'm gonna get up, I gotta get going. I'm gonna get up for the day. I'm very excited for this one. It is currently about six in the morning. Woke up at about 5.30, I had to get water and take a shower here down at the marina. I am heading down to, I'm currently in Copper Harbor and I'm heading down to Houghton, Michigan, which is the nearest town it's where I have to go every week to go get food. It's about an hour south, about 50 miles south. And I'm doing this video, gonna be heading out to Isle Royale National Park. Um, it's, this trip is so last minute and very very hectic because i booked it literally a couple days ago um i wasn't even planning on going out there but it was killing me i'm like i'm right here i'm so close to it i've wanted to, it's a place i've wanted to go for a while but my work schedule has been super crazy and busy uh, we're shorthanded the park so i didn't really want to take any time off so it's my two days off and i'm going to be going only for one night i have one one whole afternoon and then i'm leaving tomorrow morning there yeah let's do it catch you guys on the road Alrighty, guys just made it down in here into houghton and i just checked in Got my boarding pass. Luckily, I was on the list. Uh, the check-in offices and stuff right there. And then right over there is the Ranger 3. The boat I'm going to be ferry. I'm going to be taking out there. It was built back in the 1950s, so it's a pretty old boat. Things I was worried about, it's quite a bit bigger than the Queen. The Queen's only 100 foot. The Ranger is 165 foot. But it can handle a lot more on the, on the big lake. The big lake is super, super windy today, so that was the thing I was kind of worried about. See a lot of rocking and probably some seasick, pretty seasick people out in the ranger today. We'll see what happens though. It should be fun and yeah, let's get packed and let's get out there.
we're delighted to have you with us today as we journey to Isle Royale National Park. World's largest lift bridge, apparently. I had no idea, I always wondered how that went up. The city of Houghton, the city of Hancock over there, the world's largest lift bridge. It's pretty dang cool. down. It's a crazy wind, crazy waves out there today. Look at the size of those. Alrighty guys, I made it to Rock Harbor here on the far northeast side of Isle Royale. Unfortunately, we did have a delay on the ferry and ended up taking six, seven hours. Um, we had to spend an hour at Mott Island, which is like the headquarters in like a research center on one of the islands out there. So unfortunately, it's gonna kind of even limit my plans of what I want to do here even more, but. Do a like down here. Oh, this is nice. Look at that, we got the bay right down there. This might be the move. Get them packed. It's almost five o'clock already and gotta get camp set up. Let's do it. It's a bit of a rush, but I just got my tent all set up. It is nice to get settled, I wouldn't deny that. I was talking to the captain, he said it was one of the roughest rides he's had all season. And eight to 10 foot waves. I thought they were a lot bigger than that. They looked way bigger than that, but they were only eight to, ten, ten, eight to 10 foot or so. But halfway through, a whole bunch of people started getting really, really seasick. And luckily I don't get seasick. Um, the only thing that was making me feel a bit nauseous was all the people gagging and throwing up next to me. It's uh, 75 miles out here and it is a lot. It just honestly blows my mind, 75 miles away. It just blows my mind that it is a part of Michigan still. Like it is like a lot closer. To, it's a couple miles away from the Canadian border in Minnesota and Wisconsin. The only way to get out here is by ferry or seaplane. So you're pretty dang isolated out here. Here's a little map I picked up. This is where we came in at uh, through here. That's the Rock Harbor Lighthouse. The harbor is right here. It's really not a big harbor at all. Right there and I'm camped out right about here. I'm going for a little bit of a hike. There's swamp right there. The lake way down there. There really is not a whole lot in town. There's two restaurants, the Rock Harbor Lodge, place where the seaplanes land, and a couple little gift shops, a little camp store by the ferry, and that is about it. Other than that, it's pretty much all just like employee housing and stuff. Yeah, so I'm on the Scoville Trail. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to hike all the way out to the point. It's a four-mile round-trip hike, which is quite a long ways, and it's getting late, and I think I'm going to go out to eat tonight, so 
I'm gonna save like an hour of daylight left for that. Wow, did it sure turn into a beautiful day. Look clear the water is out here, it's amazing. It's a beautiful fox. Hey guys. <laughs> you need your video? <laughs> I think I got it. I think I'm supposed to shoot him away. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Get down. Down. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Time for bed. I'm to zip this guy short. All tucked in for the night. Catch you guys in a bit. Yeah, I'm absolutely exhausted. Um, the ferry leaves again at nine tomorrow mornings, and I gotta be there to check in at eight in the morning, so. No bears to worry about, just wolves and um, a moose possibly trampling me in the middle of the night. But, I mean, that's not too bad, right? <laughs> and I'll catch you guys in the morning. Do you guys hear that? That is loud. I can hear it. I heard it grunt two or three times. I can, just, I can see the outline of something right out there. Dude, that is a freaking moose right outside my tent. This is insane. Good morning, guys. What an unbelievable night last night. <sighs> Pretty eventful. About 3.30, that's when I started hearing that, like, moving or something moving around a little ways from the tent. And then I could hear it, like, eating and chewing and, like, ripping and shredding the leaves off of the little branches. And then I heard it grunt two or three times, and that's when I kind of realized that was 100% a moose. Legit right outside my tent. I did feel a little bit vulnerable and I did get a little bit nervous because moose are like legit, like over a thousand pounds. They are massive animals and I have no defense in this tent. If it wanted to trample me in the middle of the night, it very easily could. So but I'm going to get up. <laughs>
There's the harbor down there. Oh no. That's the same name as Oh, I just slept in a little bit. I've had to wake up early the last couple of days. Been working a lot lately, and I have a 10 to 6.30 work shift in the booth at the state park today, so I need to get up, get ready, get this bed made, and start this video off. Let's do it. So we had about two weeks where the nights got really cold, and I was sleeping amazing, and everything was great. All the bugs died off, and I thought the cold weather was here to stay. Big issue is it's been barely getting below 60 at night, so all the flies have absolutely exploded again this week. So, I mean, it's been nice weather, but for late September, it is now late September. I'm kind of like, I've been ready for the cold for a while with all the flies, and when you're living in a truck, just living in the cold is much easier than living when it's hot and humid. There's my rant for the morning. All right, just ate some Pop-Tarts and a granola bar. Gotta get up to work. My uniform on already, and I will catch you guys probably at my lunch break, which is like three o'clock on this shift, so I'll see you guys then. Just finished up my shift, it's like seven o'clock now. Go find a place, do some cooking. All right, just got out of the truck. Pulled up to one of my favorite spots. It's so nice being able to go like legit two miles from where I'm camped at and be able to get away and just really be out in the middle of nowhere, but. All right, I'm gonna get the old drawer opened up. All right, got burger, lettuce. My lettuce is definitely not so fresh anymore. <laughs> we got sauce, pickles, and cheese, and then tortillas, which I will have to also get. We're just gonna take a ball of burger and squish it on. All right, squish it on like so, and now we're gonna start the cooking process. Just got the stove on, and take our butter. And salt that guy up. And what you do, get your burger squished on there in the top on the tortilla, and then you just flip it on here, let that pan get nice and hot, and just flip that guy in there. All right, didn't get super crispy in the bottom, but it's all right. Now the toppings. I mean, that looks pretty close to Big Mac sauce. It works for me. Sprinkle that on there. Wow, that looks, well, not super picturesque, but besides the lettuce, it turned out real nice and crispy, and it definitely looks, and my one drop of sauce kind of going, going rogue on me there. But overall, that looks quite delicious. Let's, let's dig in. Alrighty, here we go. Got the hills, some fall colors coming out. Nice evening. Let's dig into this Big Mac taco. Looks like a Big Mac in the inside, and it tastes a whole lot, a whole lot like a Big Mac, except a whole lot crispier and crunchier with the tortilla. Yep, it's ridiculously good. I'm gonna make a whole bunch more of these. Very messy, but very good. It's windy out today. Boy, it really doesn't feel right how delicious these are. Mm. Wow. 
Wow, I am stuffed after that. I ate, I don't even know. That's how you know something was delicious. You lost track of how many you ate. <laughs> All I know is I went through almost a pound of burger and tacos. Like, sort of feel like I'm gonna have a heart attack after eating all that, but <laughs> back in the road, awfully delicious dinner. Catch you guys in a bit. All tucked into the truck camper for the night. Yeah, just a nice day living in the back of a truck again and working. It's hard to believe that it is almost October already. But I'll catch you guys in the morning. Hope it's a peaceful night. Good night. There's two beautiful eight points right outside my truck camper this morning. Look at those racks. It's early in the morning, so the lighting is pretty trash, but wow. Look at that. In the woods is so cool being able to live just right basically in the woods. You can always listen to the trees, and it's pretty cool. But all this mossy lichen stuff, it's called old man's beard, as, as it's known, some people call it. Growing all over these trees up here. And apparently, talking to a local, he said it makes a really good tea and is actually super healthy that the Native Americans in the area and then up in the north here would use it to help heal like battle wounds and cure infections and stuff. So it has some like medicinal value and stuff apparently, at least supposedly. But we're going to try it out in a tea and I'm going to collect some and test it out and see if it's even like edible and doesn't taste horrible. Yeah, look at this stuff. It is so weird. It really does feel like a beard or something. <laughs> but I'm gonna take it back to the truck, I'm gonna boil some water, and we're gonna test it out. All right, get my water boiling my pot here. Truck camper all opened up. I bet this stuff would make amazing fire tinder too. It's so dry and feather-like, but just plop that in there. <laughs> this looks like some sort of weird drug or something. <laughs> Let's see, it actually doesn't smell horrible. Whoa, it, it looks exactly like tea. All right, just made it down to Copper Harbor. See the town way over there. And we're gonna try my tea right here. This is, what a contrast. I have like a Native American healing tea and then right to my left for breakfast, I have a cookies and cream Pop-Tart. <laughs> All right, cheers, here we go. Whoa, that's weird. I think the closest thing I can compare it to is like um, like a peppermint tea, but it has almost kind of that kick and taste, like that little, that little kick in the back of your throat. Strong like dirt taste after it, so it's still not like great tasting. i will show you guys right here how Copper Harbor got its name. You can see Copper Harbor was really like the, America's first like true big mining rush, even before like the California Gold Rush, the Alaska Yukon Gold Rush. People all flocked here in, in search of copper, and there's still actually tons of copper up here. You can see what looks like, what looks like almost just like a string laying on the beach here, and it runs up here. It goes all the way down here. This is actually a copper vein right here. This whole line is all copper. It goes right through. It's just crazy. There's copper veins all over the rocky shoreline of Superior in Copper Harbor here. Yay! Alrighty, guys. Just got done with my work shift for the evening. I think that's going to do it for this video. Catch you guys in the next adventure. Holy macro, I just got out of work guys. This storm came out of nowhere.
quite cozy in here. Oh, it got dark fast. I'm absolutely starving. I got my bowl of chili. Bowl of chili on a very chilly night. 40, 45 mile per hour winds out tonight. And it is in the 40s and it feels like with the wind chill in the 30s. So we're gonna be layering up thick tonight. So hopefully I don't freeze my butt off. Dude, it is legit, like a jet engine out there. All tucked in for the night, getting set up. Got my heater, first time I'm breaking it out all fall. It's gonna get down to like high 30s tonight, so real cold. Got a big old bowl of chili, last of my chili, leftover from my family was visiting. My mom made it, so shout out to her. And I had a whole bunch left over, so I got a whole bunch sent with me. Big old hunk of summer sausage, and my grandpa's summer sausage is the best in the world, so I'm gonna be chowing down on some of that. I've been really busy doing a whole bunch of stuff the last week. I went and checked out a, an abandoned mine, the, Del the Delaware mine it was called. It, Eight million pounds, I, I wanna say, of copper. And it ran for like 40 years and I explored a whole bunch of the tunnels. They had a whole bunch of shafts and they were all flooded and it was, it was kind of creepy, but really, really cool. So that was a lot of fun. So I explored abandoned mine. That was one thing I wanted to do up here. I went and checked out Mount Bohemia, which is the top rated skiing and snowboarding hill in the entire Midwest. And apparently people come from out west to come to that hill and it was something, I hiked the top of it, it was like a thousand foot of elevation gain in like a half mile. But it was a pretty epic view. The fall colors are really starting to peak right about now, so I did that. Um, I did some fishing, the splake, which is the big fish to catch up here in Copper Harbor. It's like a lake trout and a brook trout hybrid. They're just basically a big old trout. They're really pretty and they're really good eating. They've been coming into the harbor like crazy as spawn. And so I've been going down to the marina and doing some splake fishing. Haven't really had any luck yet with all this wind and craziness coming in. And then other than that, I rode, did a whole bunch of riding side by sides and explored a whole bunch of trails and explored a couple really cool spots and a really cool waterfall, a really cool waterfall with my dad. And so I did a whole bunch of exploring. Actually, this happened a couple weeks ago, but I never explained on video. The first time in my life ever I saw the Northern Lights and it was absolutely amazing. That was one of the biggest reasons I also wanted to come up here because you have a much, up here is a designated dark sky area and you have, it's like the best, one of the best places in the lower 48 to see the Northern Lights. And they came out, it was just some big bucket list thing. It's something I've always wanted to dreamed of seeing. And I went out about 12 and they came out and it was just the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Just how fast, they didn't come out really green but it was just how fast they moved. I went down to the beach overlooking the lighthouse and it was like, I spent like two or three hours and it was just absolutely incredible. The most memorable night of my life. Unfortunately, I have this, I have a really old phone that doesn't take good pictures and I don't, my other video camera, uh, I couldn't figure out the settings to get any good, great pictures of the Northern Lights. So I'll throw a couple pictures up for you guys, but nothing too crazy. I'm still working on trying to figure out a good way to get them pictures of it yeah that's a little bit update of think how things been going the state park's really been winding down so um this the season actually is going to be ending here and i only have one more week left in the season it's going to be mid-october it's october 10th today so i only got about one more week left i'm gonna get tucked into bed and yeah hit the hay all right let's get this heater fired up it is very cold in here i'm gonna do this thing Press it until you get that light, and then you hold it for about 10 seconds. Voila. Oh, it's gonna feel amazing. Alrighty guys, it is still raining on and off, and got the heater on, and my sleeping bag, and I'm gonna be getting to bed. I'm gonna get to bed, I will catch you guys in the morning. Hopefully it's a nice, peaceful night. Good morning, good morning, guys. Let's see, it's very cold in the back of the truck here this morning. 
It was raining on and off all last night. And it was about 39 degrees this morning. It's very cold in here. Cold, cold night last night, but slept really good. Let's get up and at him. There's quite a stack of pancakes right there. Looking awfully delicious. Let's dig into this. It's gonna be an absolute feast. Here's a spot. Now just look how absolutely beautiful it is up in the hills. Absolutely gorgeous up in the hills. Wow. I mean, just look at the colors in those trees. Here's how things are looking back here. Got it all nice and cleaned out after staying at the state park for a while. You can probably tell up here in the hills. And tonight is actually my last night truck camping up here in Copper Harbor. Actually finished up work at the state park for the season a couple days ago. Finished up at Fort Wilkins State Park. Worked there for a while and it was a really, really, really fun summer. I absolutely loved it, honestly. Met so many cool people, made some amazing friends working there. It was just an awesome experience and getting to work outside all the time. Done living down at behind the, the headquarters, some back up here on some state land. I had said goodbye and cleaned up everything from the park, everything from behind the park, everything situated and said goodbye to that spot. And now I'm up here and it's a couple days later after the season ended. I'm originally planning on staying a couple extra weeks after the season ended, but something came up and I have to leave a bit, quite a bit earlier than I was expecting. But so I have to, gonna be leaving tomorrow morning, but it's just not the end of the world on him, honestly. It's starting to feel, after a couple days, I, it's kind of hit me in the last day or two. I'm really starting to miss home and family. It's been almost four months living full time in a truck and I'm ready to go home. And all that aside, it's nice to be up here settled up in the hills and just my last night gonna be chilling doing my spend my last night in the truck camper up here in copper harbor and a place that i've spent a lot of time and really gotten gotten to know all right we're abandoning trying to cook outside as this dang wind is making things impossible also abandoning trying to make a fire because the wind is also making that impossible All right, get all the cooking supplies inside. And that's been the story. That's one of the main reasons I'm kind of happy to be kind of looking forward to leaving tomorrow. The weather the last like two weeks has been really horrible. It's just been 40 mile per hour winds, very cold and tons and tons of rain. I haven't seen the sun. It's just been super dark and gloomy for a long time, which I found cozy being in the truck for a while, but after a while and you don't see the sun at all and just the wind has made it. So I pretty much can't do a hardly anything. So yeah, it's been kind of frustrating. So I'm definitely ready to be calling it quits here pretty soon. So yeah, but all that aside, let's make up some quesadillas to kind of turn into a staple on this channel. Evenings are pretty long. It's getting dark at like 6, 6, 6.30 pretty much. And that leaves a lot of time, especially now with the park closed and all my, my friends from the park, a lot of them are heading home. So I've been pretty much by myself like the last week or two and it's starting to get a little bit, a little bit boring. So these pizza quesadillas aren't boring though. This is gonna be delicious. Two quesadillas in and we'll get these cooking. Oh boy, I'll settle in for the night. Oh man, oh, I'm so sore. Oh, the reason I'm so sore is, so yesterday, I planned to make a video where I hiked out, I heard about a, a little cabin way off in the woods, an off-grid cabin that you can stay at for free. And I hiked all the way out there, it was like five miles or something, I backpacked all the way out there. Made it to the cabin and found out it was way older and way rougher than I was expecting. <laughs> a whole lot more creepy than cozy than I was expecting. So I didn't end up staying there. 
and I ended up hiking all the way back out that same day, which was a bummer because I was planning on standing there. And so I ended up having to hike like 11, 12 miles yesterday after I'd been lazy and sitting in the truck for about a week straight, and I was not in shape for that. So I hiked about 12 miles yesterday with roughly 50, 40, 50 pounds of weight on my back, and I'm f absolutely feeling it today. <laughs> now, like, the Copper Harbor has really started to feel like, actually felt like home now, so. On one hand, it's super fun to see a bunch of different places, and on the other hand, living in a truck, to actually get to know get to know a place really, really well, and get to know its people, especially, too. Like, I've met some of the nicest people I've, uh, probably some of the nice the nicest people I've ever met in this trip, and I think I'm gonna, those relationships are going to carry over, and I'm hoping to come back up, and see and hang out with them again and i'm just gonna be hanging out relaxing for a little while and i think that i'm gonna get to bed nice and warm in here getting nice and toasty i like to turn it on for like 10 to 15 minutes right before i go to bed just to make it nice and all heated up and nice and hot in here makes it easy to fall asleep and then i'll get get a good first couple hours of sleep out of the way on these cold nights but i am going to get to bed i will catch you guys in the morning Good night. Time to get up for the morning. Ugh. It is humid in here. Wow. Oh my word. How much mist there is up in the hills. I gotta make this snap. Just get it dressed. Shoes on. wet. Wow, it is a very, very cold and wet day today. Kind of a bummer to have this weather on my last day morning here, but that's kind of how it's been the last couple weeks, and I'm ready to be done with it, so <laughs> time to get on out of here. Sure is beautiful out though. I finally hit prime colors down here in the harbor, up here in the harbor. All this yellow and orange is so pretty. Brady day for a hike in the woods, but I'm enjoying it. It's beautiful out here. Heading down, walking down to Superior. Gonna say goodbye to one of my favorite parts of the town here. There's the lighthouse way out there. It's beautiful out there. You can see the yellow out in the point there. And I actually got to go out and do some work and maintenance out in the lighthouse and I went to the top of the tower. It was absolutely amazing. One of the highlights of the summer for sure. Beautiful shoreline. I'm gonna miss this spot. This is where I watched the Northern Lights. I spent a lot of time in this spot. It is pretty much a ghost town in Kappa Harbor now. <laughs> Not much happening.
last hot morning drink in the harbor. Absolutely beautiful out here though, the colors. Yeah, I'm really gonna miss it here in the harbor and being right in Superior. There's just something about living right in the lake, the big lake that is truly special. <clears throat> I was worried spending so long here that I'd grow to just not appreciate it or just see it more as a job and kind of lose just not that appreciation for living in such a cool place. But honestly, spending as much time as I have here, it's only like <clears throat> greatened my love for it up here and how much I love this area. It has been something though to see just like the change of the seasons and now it's it is like hardly a soul in town this morning It's just so so peaceful and I feel you know, even though I'm really I think I'm gonna really miss it up here I'm really gonna miss it. and It's a bummer to be leaving. I'm feeling ready to go home I accomplished basically everything I wanted to do up here this summer. Gosh, I feel very content leaving but yeah, this is definitely a place I'm Definitely gonna be coming back to it's definitely sad to be leaving but let's get on out of here and start making my way home. Oh, I'm gonna miss walking around this little town. I sure do love it here. Goodbye, Copper Harbor. Been good to me. Until next time. Yeah, absolutely unreal, unreal time up here, up here in the UP of Michigan, and never gonna forget it. And yeah, that's about all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the